There are very few people out there who've spent more time studying the contours of our planet than Peter Bellerby. Um, my name's Peter Bellerby and I'm the owner of Bellerby Globe Makers and we make terrestrial and celestial globes. It's such a big job editing the whole world because the globe isn't just a, a geographical representation, it's a moment in, of history and time. At first sight, globe making may seem like an artisan tradition that doesn't belong in the 21st century. It's a world dominated by the digital, a world where we always appear to be in the center. Sometimes it takes the physicality of a globe to remind us that it's all we've got. And what we've got is both stunningly beautiful and increasingly fragile. It's so interesting the way the world has changed over the last two decades. Um, and it's nice to be kind of fighting back from a traditional stance. I think it's really important. I think you, you, we can't live with a computer screen and a phone. Um, you need things that have more substance to them. So Peter set out on a mission to paint the world, literally. Ten years ago, he was working on his first globe out of his living room. Today, he's teaching an entirely new generation of artists the secrets of crafting entire worlds by hand. Each globe is made up of gores, which are oval strip cutouts from the painted maps. The painters then take the gores and paint them with layers of watercolors. Then, they are soaked and stretched in bowls of water and individually attached to the globes. What happens if you make a mistake? I cry. <laughs> That's Leo. He's one of the newest globe makers in an expanding team of very patient experts. Yeah, because we need to reprint the core, recut the core, give it to the painter. When you learn something through mistake, you never forget about it. You'll, you'll never make that same mistake again. The learning process is so long because you just have to repeat the same thing over and over again until you've got it in your subconscious. One of my favourite islands is Deception Island in the Antarctic. <laughs> and that's Leah. She's one of the cartographers at Bellerby Globemakers & Co. Her job is transforming maps into a dynamic representation of the changes in our contemporary world. So you get to know the islands really well because a lot of the time you have to replace them or well, they have a habit of like falling off the map and getting lost. So you get to know this quite well because you always have to look out for them. Once the cartographers are done, it's the globe makers and painters who apply the world onto a globe. The coastline on a globe is the most important aesthetic message we can get across because that's where you really have to fight to get in the information you want, but also where it distinguishes the, the globe. The largest globe, known as the Churchill Globe, takes about eight months to make. When it's all finished and put together, um, you kind of, you can just look at it for hours because it's just so big. I make it um, still myself with John, uh, who's my head globe maker, and the two of us have to make it together because the panels of gore are so large. And um, it's amazing to finish that, and it just is so, such a dramatic piece. Peter and his team are now working to remake a 17th century celestial globe commissioned by the Louvre. It's stunning. It's, um, it's, it has a diameter of about 1.1 meters. They still have the original copper plates, which are in perfect condition. And so it's probably going to take a, a year and a half, two years to complete. There's something larger than life in the work that Peter and his team do every day. In a way, they're like the guardians of our planet, carefully chronicling how it changes and giving even the most remote and underappreciated parts the attention and appreciation they deserve. It's having the whole world in front of you it does make you think about the planet a lot, and it's certainly so many news stories relate to the globe, be it a political situation in one country, a war in another country, global warming in another country. It's so relatable to, to what's going on, and having that in front of you um, allows you to put everything into a slightly better perspective, maybe. <laughs>